In the Articles 8 and uh, following of the Belgic Confession, we begin to speaking about the Trinity. So you see the uh, order of the uh, that the Belgic Confession follows. Article 1 said we believe in God, and then Article 2 through 7 said how does this God reveal himself to us, and now Article 8 uh, and following, 8, 9, it's, and 10 and 11, uh, speak about uh, what this God reveals himself, uh, what this God reveals about himself, what scriptures reveal about this God. And the first and the first thing that we need to notice is that the scriptures reveal God to be triune. Triune. So the word three and the word one. Three in one. That's what the word Trinity means, of course, that God is three in one. Now this is a, a mystery. What is a mystery? A mystery in uh, biblical terms is something that we would not be able to find out by human investigation, but that has to be revealed. That we know because it is revealed, and that we would only be able to know through revelation. So that God is a triune God is not something that would be able to be uh, discerned simply by uh, by human investigation. Now, the um, this mystery begins to be revealed r right in the beginning, in Genesis 1 already. Not that we have a definition or a teaching of the Trinity as such in Genesis 1, but we do begin to understand that uh, there is a plurality within God. God says, let us make man in our image. So there's a, a, a plurality. It's not yet clear that this uh, uh, plurality is Trinity, but there is already the teaching that there is a plurality within God. Now what is um, somewhat unclear in the Old Testament becomes manifestly clear in the New Testament. If you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 8, verses 4 to 6, then there is um, the teaching that there is one God, only one God. For us there is one God, the Apostle Paul says. But then as you continue to study scriptures, you see that this one God is eternally existent, is existent in three persons. So if you go to uh, Matthew uh, 3, 3, uh, verse uh, 6, sorry about the, the mess there, 16 and 17, where the Lord Jesus Christ is baptized, then you see a reference to the, the Trinity. I'm just going to look up that passage here. Maybe you want to look it up in your Bible. Matthew 3. Matthew 3, uh, 16 and 17. This is when John the Baptist baptizes the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we read there that as, uh, as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, uh, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. So we see there a reference to the Trinity. The Son is in the water, coming up out of the water. He was baptized. Uh, the voice from heaven, which is God the Father, identifying the Son as his Son, and the Spirit of God descending and alighting on him. Now that's the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christian baptism, we read about uh, what the Lord taught about uh, baptism in Matthew 28, verse 19, where we are, where the, the church is instructed to baptize converts, and, and then by implication also the children of converts, but that's a different discussion, the whole matter of infant baptism that we'll get into at a different time. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the command for baptism, baptism is to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the, the, the scriptures teach that God is, uh, is triune, is three in one. Now this was challenged in the time of the early church. The, it was challenged by a number of people. The first main challenger of the doctrine of the Trinity was a man called Arius, who lived from about uh, 250 to 336. Arius said there was a time that the Son of God did not exist. He said that uh, Jesus Christ is the first created being. First created being of God. The first of God's creation. The first being that God created. This was uh, caused quite an upheaval in, in the church. And the church met in council in Nicaea and uh, discussed this whole issue. The whole church was, was somewhat divided between uh, those who uh, followed Arius and those who followed the teaching of Scripture. Now, Nicaea met in 325, and it denounced the, this teaching. It said, no, Jesus Christ is not the first created being of God. Rather, uh, there never was a time when he did not exist. There never was a time that, that the Son of God did not exist. He is co-eternal with the Father. And if you look at the Nicene Creed, which has its genesis at the Council of Nicaea, but then it was uh, um, adopted uh, at the Council of Constantinople in 381, if you uh, look at the, uh, if you read the Nicene Creed, you'll see that it is very clear. It talks about uh, Jesus Christ being very God, a very God, God of God, light of light, true God not made of one substance with the Father. So he is of one substance with the Father. It did, it did sort of use uh, some uh, philosophical terms to, in an attempt to describe uh who Jesus Christ is and what the relationship is between God the Son and God the Father. Um, sometimes people are a little bit critical of these philosophical terms, but we should not be critical. The church was using uh, the, the language of the day to, to, to set forth the biblical truth that the Son of God is co-eternal with the Father, that there never was a time that the Son of God did not exist. Uh, then there was also um, debate about the uh, Holy Spirit following that when the doctrine of, uh, of the divinity of Christ was pretty well hammered out, you could say. There was also a discussion, a denial of the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, but the church also maintained the, uh, that, the, the divinity, the doctrine of the divinity of the Holy Spirit. So this uh, teaching was maintained, and uh, perhaps the most clear explanation of the uh, doctrine of the Trinity is found in the Athanasian Creed. So this is the third of the, ec of the great ecumenical creeds of the early church, you have the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, and if you uh, are to take, if you take a look at that, then you'll see that, that uh, there's a very clear confession of the Trinity. Uh, just a reminder, you can uh, find these if you go to our Federation uh, denominational webpage, canrc.org. Uh, you'll find, you can find, among other things, you can find also the three ecumenical creeds.